Welcome to Inventing Our Future on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Brittany Zimmerman. Hi, and I'm your supposed to be co-host, Richard Ha. <laughs> Wonderful. And today we are going to do a deep dive into our D category. So how are you doing, Richard? Oh, pretty good. Nice day, what? sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Good, good, good. Yeah, so Richard um, is going to help us on our category this week. I'm really excited about it because our D category is digging into dirt. So we are going to have a deeper conversation about uh, some of the things that Richard Hogg does with dirt. And I think Richard has done a thing or two with dirt before. Is that right, Richard? Yeah, uh, various different kinds of dirt and uh, rocks and all kinds of <laughs> stuff. <laughs> awesome. So um, we have the pleasure of getting uh, Richard to have a long conversation with us today about banana farming in particular, which I'm really excited about. I know very little about banana farming. I've been to a single banana plantation area in Panama one time, and that is the extent of my entire banana knowing knowledge. So I'm going to utilize the next half an hour, Richard, trying to be a sponge and get as much of that banana information out of you as I can. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> great <laughs> awesome first what got you into banana farming Richard where's the banana connection well you know I I went to UH and I flunked out of school and I I, I went to Vietnam then you know when I when I went to Vietnam I became an officer and we had this relationship where we took care of everybody and uh and that lasted for, for the longest time but when i came out of the army i decided that i wanted to uh, go into some kind of a uh, business so i decided that um, i would major in accounting because not not to wear the green visor but but to uh keep score so mm -hmm. i had a uh and that was the purpose so i had this accounting degree and uh when i first came back my dad asked me if i would help them market the uh, eggs from the egg core, which was going on at that time. So I became the co-op manager and I started interacting with the supermarkets and stuff like that. And then at that time, Chiquita started sending bananas into Hawaii and I was noticing that and saying, you know, gee, we can do that. So, and and especially, you know, we we, we had experience doing, doing that as, you know, uh, as, as small kids. So I started collecting banana boxes and just stashing it under the house. And little by little, you know, we started looking into it and say, gee, maybe why don't we see if we can get up to scale because they're sending in a lot of Chiquita bananas. So that that's how it started. You know, we 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 got interested and then we the, we were operating off the uh, Waikiluka banana, I mean chicken farm. And there was 20 acres on the side that was not uh, being used. So we didn't have any money, you know. And back then, you know, we had a, a $300 credit card when it was hard to get a $300 credit card. Um, and so we started, okay, let, let's figure out how we're going to do this. And no equipment now, no, nothing except my Toyota Land Cruiser. So what we did was we started uh, looking around for banana kiki, and we, we, we got some. And then we had to start planting and deciding how we we're going to do this. So what the way we did it was we took the um, um, Land Cruiser and drove it to mark the lines, you know, knock the California grass. And then mm -hmm. we sickles cut cut a hole, you know, and we didn't even yeah. know the spacing. But we we uh, we did that. And then we stuck it in the ground. And then we uh, waited for it to grow. So in the meantime, you're just waiting around, you know, we're punching bag, lifting weights, all this kind of stuff as, as time went on. But that that's how we started. And little by little, you know, it 
by the time the banana plants grew up, and, and we didn't even know that when you took the big banana stumps, the bunch might be halfway in, in the banana plant, you know, so you, you, you may end up with a little tiny, tiny banana uh, bunch. We didn't even, that's how much we knew. We didn't know very much. Um, but then, nevertheless, we started, you know, it, it, it started growing. And then um, it, it just, just being uh, uh, resourceful. So we had to control the grass. So back then, the, what you use was called paraquat. This is a skull and crossbones kind of uh, pesticide. Oh, uh, herbicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you got to do, it, you know, and this is automatic. You, you play the wind. You got to be upwind. And you don't you don't want to breathe that stuff in, right? right. So so if 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 the wind blows toward you, you hold your breath. You know, it's all automatic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, anyway, so that's some really so, good PPE right there. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. protect yeah, yeah. you though. Hold, hold your breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so that became second nature. You know, I knew I knew what you gotta do, yeah. So anyway, we we started growing and then little by little we, you know, um we got some bananas to to uh, to sell. So th the way we would do it is we'd harvest, cut it up into piece uh, uh, hands, and put it on where we used to have a chicken wire, and then and we'd select the uh, the the hands that were ripe to put in the box to send it down to uh, where we're selling eggs to. In this particular case, it was food fair supermarket. Mm -hmm. So we were doing that for a while, and and. Uh, Little by little, you know, we started to realize, you know, in Central America, they, they actually use what they call banana gas to ripen the bananas. So, oh. yeah, because we, it, you know, I was a co-op manager, yeah, of the A co-op. Yeah. And so that's how I knew all these people. But they wouldn't talk to me when we were selling eggs. But when we're talking bananas, now all of a sudden they, they actually talk to me. So, so when I was over there um, bringing the bananas, they, they'd say, Gee, something wrong with these bananas. You know, they 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 get uh, they fall off the hand, they get bruised easily and stuff like that. And I would go, oh, I don't, I don't know. You know, we'll we'll do, we'll see what we can do and stuff like that. And I felt like a, uh, a kid going to the the principal all the time, getting scolding over the bananas. So that's when I started looking into it and saying, banana gas, okay. So we went down to gas flow and asked them, you know, uh, do you have this special gas that they use for banana? And the lady told me, are you looking for banana gas? I said, yeah, that, that's what I wanted. So I had no idea what it looked like. So we brought it back. And then you have to put it in a They room. actually had it? They had yeah. it on island, the banana they, gas? They, yes. Yes, they did. Oh, wow. And nobody was using it. They just yeah. they have it. Yeah, so we brought it home. And then we know that you'd have to you know, release it into a room uh, to, to, to get the bananas to ripen. So we turned it on and holy smokes, it worked. So then, then we realized that you needed to do have some kind of refrigeration to, to and we didn't know why, but you know, so we got a little air conditioner and we started ripening the bananas. And mm -hmm. and one day we opened the door and the whole room it it had, the, the air conditioner had frozen up because there was so much heat that they it overpowered the ability of the the air conditioner to handle and and it was you know we lost 25 cases we were panicking wow. you know I mean, we were small operators at then <laughs> but then that's what it it set us on this course oh okay so now what that means is we got to have insulation we got to have the proper sizing etc cetera, etc cetera. so we, we and and that's how we started and from there we went to uh uh Kapuho. And because my dad's uh, friend was a uh, fireman and they had some extra land and stuff like that, and they were growing papayas on it. And that was where the syndicones, if you go down there, the syndicones is down there, and it's just where the pavement ends coming back toward uh, Hilo. Mm -hmm. so, so we started planting there, and they had papayas growing. So they ripped the papaya, uh, they ripped the uh, uh, lava, and we planted it in, in the ribs. Because it was real dry, yeah, and and but it it actually worked. So we stayed there for a while, but um, as time went on, it was all hand labor, you know. And but before that, I I learned about um, 
when when we started getting banana cake, we got it from uh, Uncle Sonny Komele down at uh, our Maku property. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was noted for having the best watermelon. And I used to go over there to learn and get the banana cake from him, but mostly to learn, yeah, to see what he was mm-hmm. doing. So yeah. what he did was, you know, when the watermelon was like golf boss size, he would put a stake in the ground and, and say, you know, write down when it uh, when it was that size. And then from there, he decided when it was time to harvest. Not, not, not only visual, you know, like some people say, you knock on it and then it'll tell you whether it's ripe or not. He yeah. didn't do it like that. He, he, he timed it and he associated the different seasons longer during the winter shorter than the summer mm-hmm. so we we adapted that to bananas and how we did that was we put we had to put bags on to pre- protect the bananas especially from you know there was the cinder was going off at the uh, and and anyway we had to protect the bananas and then we also had to determine when was the right the time to harvest because just mm-hmm. looking at it you walk around the bunch several times you it's all judgment, yeah. You end up a lot this week and nothing next week. So what we did was we adapted what Uncle Sonny did. We we put on colored ribbons, a colored ribbon for each week. So mm-hmm. during the winter, we let it go 18 weeks. During the summer, we go less than 16 weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, just mm-hmm. by one primary color and two secondary colors, you know. So we, we had a... And why what that did was it made it so you could see when you needed to harvest, if to, this week was all red, then you yeah. only pull the reds, you know. Oh, maybe interesting. Maybe. So yeah. what's the equivalence of, you said you would mark it by time, right? When the watermelon was the size of a golf ball, when would you start marking the bananas? Is it right when? When you put the bag on. Oh. And then you tie the ribbon to the bottom of the bag. Gotcha. Then you don't have to go close to look at the bunch. All you got to yeah. do is be far enough away to to see the color oh save a lot of time walking on the lava rock. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> really 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 a, a, a practical yeah <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah. wow that's really cool that's a really great example of adapting knowledge from other types of agricultural practices and finding ways of utilizing that right and molding that into yeah. bananas it's like a watermelon to banana yeah, that, and that's how it transformed the banana industry. Because before that, there wasn't an organized way to do this. Yeah. 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 So yeah. We, we transformed the banana industry. So another thing we did was, you know, going from there at uh, Kapoho to coming into uh, Keao and into Pop, uh, you know, let uh, Kapoho was all rocks here yeah, with cinder. Yeah. And then when you get to uh, Keao, it's uh, soil mixed in with the rocks, but primarily rocks. And then when you go to Keao, it's all soil. It's total, totally different. So, you know, so, so when we moved into Keao, it was almost the same. You know, it was just kind of rocky and we did the same sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, but when we moved to Pepe Kill, now all of a sudden there's deep soil. And it's muddy and stuff like that. And so we had to figure out how, and we never had that problem while we were on the rocks. Uh, meaning if you were to drive tractors down to, when you're harvesting, mm-hmm. it'd be muddy, you get stuck in the mud. So mm-hmm. how did you fix that? So what we did was, in, and we used to plant, you know, 250 banana plants per acre. And then after you harvest the first one, you let four go, then you end up with a thousand per acre. So that was the population. So we decided, okay, what if we went 750 per acre, but but in a straight line, 700 individual plants. And that way you could mow the, the aisles. And that way you could get traction. So mm. that worked, you know? So we adapted again because we had to, yeah? But, yeah. but what was really interesting about that was think about this now. Instead of 1,000 bunches, you get 750 bunches, but the same amount of production, if not more per acre. So the, yeah. the labor per bunch is much less because mm-hmm. now you're only dealing with 750, bagging yeah. and you know, all this other stuff. Yeah. So, so we did that kind of stuff. It was kind of funny, kind of fun, you know? Right. And I, 
this was true during the time that I spent uh, looking at some of the banana plantations down in Panama was I was so surprised to learn that you only get one bunch of bananas per tree. Is that yeah. true for all yeah. varieties of banana? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, except for, and this is very unusual. We were doing tissue culture and mm -hmm. we, we had to go do tissue culture because we were, you know, well, we had to go do tissue culture. We made our own tissue culture lab and we, we started cold. We didn't know anything about it. So we did it. What we didn't know was that after you get the seventh, seventh generation, you start to get mutants. And when you start to get mutants, one of the mutants we got was a short apple banana with two bunches on it. Wow. Isn't that something? I mean, I'm just yeah. starting the brain of what you could do because of the, uh, uh, in other words, you could go find um, disease resistant plants like they do in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, but I it's a it's a diversion. I I you know you asked if they were um with just one bunch and, and it is true, just it's just one bunch for planting. That's yeah. so cool. And I know there's a lot of other fruits where you can take the fruit and you can utilize that fruit and actually bury it and it'll grow a new plant for you. Is that similar with banana? If I were to go bury a banana, would I get a banana tree? Uh not not in this particular instance. You know, it, it wouldn't grow from Cavendish bananas. Yeah, so you would have to get uh, the, 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 the suckers that's off the side and plant those. Got you. Yeah, the little offshoots that come off the bottom. Yeah. Those are the things I need. Okay, those are the cakey. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, yeah, I was thinking some of the, the two biggest issues that they were facing down in Panama with uh, the banana plantations. Um, Number one uh, was pests. So like when they will go to harvest the bananas, they'd have like these massive spiders or snakes that were harming the people who were harvesting it. And I heard there's not too many snakes on the island. Um, did you guys experience anything similar to that? No, you know, we're, we're really lucky. Every once in a while you get a spider, but you know, that's not a big deal, right? But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not poisonous spiders or anything. And we don't have snakes, so we, we don't have we didn't have it, that problem. However, there, there was a, a problem of uh, the, 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 the banana it, it can can catch uh, um, fungus and stuff like that and deform it a little bit. So what, what they did in Central America was they uh, they had pesticide infused bags. So the, there's a pesticide in the bag. But the problem with that is that it would make, if you did that, your workers would be constantly in contact with the chemicals. So we yeah. just decided not to do that as an industry. Yeah. So we never yeah. did. Yeah. So it, oh. anyway, just. Yeah. So that's, yeah. And speaking of the chemical side of things, um, I was seeing also that uh, after you harvest a hand, you know how they have like where it's cut, they would actually have like a chemical that they would dot on the end of where the banana stem was cut. And I think in order to keep it fresh or something along those lines, the tour was done in Spanish. So uh, bear with me here on translation. But is that, you know, is that something that you guys, how do you keep the banana fresh? Did you all guys also use this thing or was there other ways of, of tackling that? No, we never had to do that, you know, and, and I noticed that that's what they do for organic uh, 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 bananas that's, that, that they sell in the market from, from mm -hmm. Central America, but yeah. we, we never had to do that, no. Oh, wonderful. All right, and then um, I heard um, that there was something funny related to Fred Flintstone on your banana farm. Is there a story <laughs> behind that? Yeah, you, you know, uh, when we were in Kapoor, everything was done by hand. And mm -hmm. and uh, so we were trying to figure out, okay, how can we make this a, a, a more efficient operation? So mm -hmm. the first thing we did was we asked my brother-in-law to help us build a, a you know, a, a structure so that we can do the packing. So when we did the packing, then we needed uh, conveyors, you know, roller conveyors, the, the kind that you can just carry around. So we yeah. did get that then we needed to get it into um refrigerated containers 
So, so how do you get it from there and to fill up the containers? So we, and with no money, yeah? So mm -hmm. what we did was we bought a, a forklift that had a, one of those tires had a big part of it broken off. So every time the tires spun, you'd hear clunk, clunk, clunk. But, you know, it saved the, the guys a lot of work. <laughs> so yeah. They with Flintstone, yeah. So it was pretty funny. But then, oh, Fred but, Flintstone was the name of the tractor? <laughs> yeah. Of the forklift? Yeah. Yeah, the forklift, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could you see their feet underneath? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we were evolving, trying to become more efficient and more efficient with, and in a way it was good, you know, because we didn't have to spend money. We we were very, very careful about not spending, overspending, because we didn't have the money to start off with. So in other words, that we didn't have money to lose, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And you guys grew a lot, right? I think you were telling me that at some point in time, at the height, you guys were producing millions of pounds of bananas, oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. At, at the height, we were at uh, 6 million pounds annually. By that time, you know, of course, we had a ripening room, regular forklifts and trucks and this. <laughs> and just <laughs> and <laughs> stores. Fred Flintstone was on vacation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and really funny, you know, we bought a, 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 a truck. You know, you, you know the, uh, uh, the big truck that hauls containers? We had a mm -hmm. truck. But it was funny because it leaked and it was old and it was cheap, right? Yeah. So the guy that, that was driving it, Used to wear a, a hat with a with a you know a, a, I forget what you call them as you know like a a cartoon kind of thing with a the propeller on top of the hat. Oh wow! Oh no way! For, for fun, That's you so know what funny. I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you had mentioned before too that you guys you guys brought a lot of students, right? You guys really into the education side of things. You guys yeah. would host tours and go yeah. talk um can you tell me a little bit about the education piece yeah we, and we 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 were always wanting to you know share with the schools and and, and uh what what we do so we we'd have kids and and my daughter you know one one day was uh, giving this uh group of kids uh, uh, a a tour and they you know a bundle of energy yeah they, they, <laughs> <laughs> so she's she's talking to them and and she okay now students which way will does the bananas grow facing up or facing down and half the kids would say up half would say down and then they're jumping all around and they didn't know but they just had yeah. you know an idea and then at the end of the day you know tracy thought okay uh, now students when your mom and dad goes out shopping and, you know, she made the case that KR banana is the best tasting bananas, yeah? yeah. When, when, when they go shopping, what will you tell them? What, what will you tell them to buy? They all yell in unison, yellow bananas. So, <laughs> <laughs> and we quit marketing to young kids. <laughs> as long as it's yellow, we'll buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's real funny. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Um, Richard, then, um, I've seen people open bananas and eat bananas in really strange ways. Do you have a preferred way of opening a banana? Um, I think mine was pretty traditional. Now, I, 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 my favorite is apple bananas, yeah? So, mm. so it's the, the, the normal way, you know, where the, the stem is uh, attaches to the uh, hand yeah yeah right there open them up and but okay but what were you thinking you did you hear others other ways? Man, i've seen people open bananas in the weirdest ways a lot of people say like that you open upside down so i know some people who open it up they'll like hold the stem at the bottom almost yeah. like a way to hold the banana right and then they'll peel From the almost top. what i would think of as upside down and yeah, then yeah. i've seen some people eat bananas in strange ways too where our I wish I had a banana so I could show this, but where you poke in the middle and it always uh, separates into three. Ah, okay, okay, okay. You know what That's I'm talking? And then they'll actually yeah. pull down the one third, the one third, and then the one third of the banana. Oh. I mean, I feel like I'm archaic or something. I mean, I just 
Yeah, yeah, you know, I know. Yeah. Era, you know? <laughs> yeah, I never experienced that. I, I I haven't seen that, but but I can see somebody doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And then um, did you said you know you were kind of inspired to do all of this because of the amount of Chiquita bananas that you saw being imported. What was the impact on Chiquita for you guys getting up and running? Was there still a lot of Chiquita being imported? Um, or did you guys end up taking a lot of the uh, market here in Hawaii? Well, at, at one point when we were doing 6 million, we, we were, you know, supplying quite, quite a bit, more than half of the, the, the total wow. number. Bananas, you know, is, is a tremendous volume you know, that's sold. So, yeah. so we did make an impact, but, but uh, we, we didn't have 100% of the market. Yeah, understood. Did Chiquita ever call you? Um, no, not really. But you know, when we uh, there was a time when they were trying to certify the Central American bananas as uh, when, when, uh, talking about Chiquita banana. Once an engineer came through, uh, that he was going over to the Philippines. And mm -hmm. and then he he called me because we had this certification eco OK certification, um, and then I realized what they were trying to do is they were trying to uh, extend the life of the bananas to get it a better better taste like Hawaii mm -hmm. because we're north of the equator it's it's mm -hmm. on the tree longer than in Central America so the taste is more complex so they were trying to do that by doing elevation. And I wouldn't say our bananas were better than Chiquita bananas before that. But after that, I was sure to mention that because that's what I thought. I didn't know the reason, though. But that's the reason. Yeah. yeah. Got you. Oh, no, that's really, really cool. And so I was thinking, I don't know if this would be helpful. How much does the soil and the health of the soil impact the banana, right? The quality of the banana. Yeah. It, it, it's a... It's it's huge, you, you know. The uh, bananas need a high amount of potassium, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, phosphorus uh, not as much, and 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 they need nitrogen to grow. But uh, they also need um, acid soil traps this the some of the the nutrients and makes it less uh, available to the plants. So you you need not you, you don't need acid soil which we we have predominantly on our on coast yeah mm, so yeah. so so what i'm interested in in is is trying to see if there's a way we can um how how can we do that without bringing in you know uh stuff from Kauai high to throw on the soil to change the ph i, I don't know maybe maybe uh uh a, a, Maybe biochar. I, I I just don't know. Yeah, uh, but just keeping For that sure. in mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that might be interesting. It. How do we feel about doing a digging into the dirt part two, where we go into the soil science for yeah. our next? Yeah, I think that'd Absolutely. be super cool. Yeah, we'll bring on one of the soil scientists and we'll do a digging into dirt part yeah, two, yeah. where it looks into yeah what's actually going on yeah. in soil. What is soil, right? What's what's happening in the dirt, and how does that affect our cultivars, our crops, and yes, absolutely. Uh, life around because us? The, yeah, because if the soil is, you know, uh, rich with compost and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference in the size of the bananas and stuff like that. The growth. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's do that for next time. Then. Yeah. All right. Any other uh, last minute anecdotes or things that you think we really should know about? Banana farming. Oh, I, I I can't think of anything right now. Although there's a million things that I <laughs> that we've gone through. <laughs> you, you know what it is is we've always had to plan from day one, ten years into the future. You know, it was it was always okay. Where do we want to be mm -hmm. ten years from now? Not not where we want to be today. Ten years from now. That way, you can make small changes to move toward that objective, yeah. Rather than all of a sudden get hit with it and then you're in big trouble. So we've been doing this forever, and it works pretty well. And it, that's the biggest thing, I, I I think. Okay, yeah, no, I that's really exciting. And 
I think there's a lot of lessons learned that we're going to be able to pull, not only from the banana, right? I think on other episodes, we'll get to talk more about how that translated into tomatoes and then indoor agriculture and a lot of stuff that we'll be able to garner from that. So uh, we'll kind of utilize this as a foundation piece for what we can build on. And uh, I'm really excited about that because I think it fits really, really well with the long-term thinking, right, that we discuss often and, and that you bring up uh, fairly regularly with the Keoki and Mamiya uh, mm-hmm. organization. So yeah. really excited to learn more. Thank you so much for sharing some of your banana anecdotes and knowledge with us, uh, oh, Richard. Yeah. It's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then with that, we're uh, kind of wrapping. We have to wrap up. Um, we're out of time here. So I wanted to say uh, thank you to everybody. Uh, this is Inventing Our Future on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you um, to our viewers for watching. Uh, if you want to get on our email advisories list to see a complete listing of our shows, you can sign up for them on thinktechhawaii.com. And we will be back in two weeks. So please tune in and we can d- deep dive into our Digging into Dirt Part 2 on Soil Sciences. Until then, I'm Brittany Zimmerman. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.